Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today I want to try something a little different and show you guys how to space engineer. So it's a bit of a series I used on different games, but I want to bring that series to space engineers and pretty much show or provide a beginner's guide to space engineers, whether that's for the PC or the Xbox. All right, tip number one. Have you ever experienced not being able to see what you're doing while you're in the control panel? So if you ever want to go to the control panel and work on pistons or a projector or some rotors, you can run into an issue with the control panel kind of blocking your view. So if you want to do, for example, if you want to extend your pistons and see how far they're going, you can kind of see it on the top here, but you can't see it clearly. So a quick fix for that is to go into options, game, and mess with your UI opacity. And that will give you a better idea or a good, better view of how to change your, your items, like your pistons, your rotors, and even the projector. So if you change the UI opacity, um, you can change the UI opacity here. And that is the text and all the game, um, UI options, but mainly you want to change the background opacity and that's where you'll see clearly behind the menu or uh, control panel panel where you can see the rotors pistons and things like that but you don't have to go fully to zero you can just leave it slightly so you have a game border a background border if you like it that way i prefer to have a slight background border so i leave it roughly around there you can also change the hud or HUD background if you like. Um, so that will change your HUD icons to be a more um, transparent as well. But honestly, just the UI background opacity is more than enough to play or mess around with these type of items here. So right now I am sitting in a control seat. I have full view and I can hold the button for keyboard at least. It's Alt, not sure what the Xbox version is, but you can change the camera and look pretty much look at the rotors. So if I wanted to make sure the rotors are connecting on a specific height, whatever the case may be, go to your control panels, go to your pistons, whatever they may be, and you can slowly um, increase them. And now you can really see like what's going on. So if I only wanted one of them to go up and down and I couldn't tell which pistons which, because knowing me, I don't name any of these things, you can easily tell by moving the velocity up and down or whatever things you do with it, you'll see which piston switch. So having the background opacity to nearly a zero and make it more transparent, you're able to see all that happening. So same thing with the rotors and everything like that. Um, it makes a lot of sense to do this so that that way you can see what's going on. So if I turn all, the, all three of them on, I'll see which one's turning on as you see there, or you can figure out which is which and so forth and very importantly i think it's very useful for the projector because if you were to use a projector so let's see if i pick something from my list here i probably have to use a large grid because i'm in a large grid projector right now so if i were to pick let's say this ship right so we need it to kind of be rotated in the correct direction so right now i think it looks upside down and if you didn't have a transparent background, it's going to be so hard for you to see what is going on. And honestly, it took me a while to find out that the menu system had that because uh, I've been playing it with a full background. I couldn't even see what's going on. So I would have to escape out of it and come back into the control panel cons constantly just to figure out what rotation my ship is in the projector. So this way, you can easily just see it roll. See it, y'all and see it pitch and of course horizontal and vertical offset so this way you can position it in a way that is right side up and also next to a block that you can start welding it together so that's tip number one UI background opacity all right so tip number two have you experienced rolling your rover large grid small grid or even some ships and you had some trouble trying to flip it back over. It happens to me quite often. <laughs> and 
in the very beginning of my space engineer's career, it was very difficult for me to find a way to flip it over. I would normally try to put some thrusters and gyroscope to kind of maneuver it and move it along. But there's two really quick ways to fix a flipped ship or rover. And number one is to make sure you have a gyroscope. If you have a gyroscope, you can easily do the pitch, yaw, and row. So for an example, this is a large grid rover. It's fell on its side and I want to bring it back to its original position. So if you have a gyroscope like I do, I place one here and go into your control panels and generally what you want to do is start with having it off the gyroscope have the gyroscope off and then you want to set your yaw pitch or row whichever direction it is and it's going to depend on the direction of how you place your gyroscope so if you place your gyro gyroscope correctly unlike me as i have it this way um you're, it's going to be a little different. So if you had it facing, if you had the control panel here, that's the front. If you faced it this way, this is going to be a row. So right now, since I have it slightly off, but again, you can always play around with it if you have your ship flipped over or your rover flipped over. So in here, we can go to a gyroscope. I would normally turn it off first and then maneuver the RPMs for your yaw pitch or row. So as I mentioned before, if you had the gyroscope positioned right, your row would be um, accurate here. But in my case, since I had it a little bit different, it's going to be the pitch. But let's pretend pitch is row and row is pitch. I have that 10 RPM. And now once I turn on the gyroscope, it will start to row. So best way to do that, probably not in the menu here. I would just put it on a hotkey or a two bar and I set it over here, right down there on the bottom left or middle. Once you hit it on, it starts to rotate a bit and you flipped your ship or your rover. So that's a quick and easy way of doing that. And the small grid, same thing. You can do the same exact thing. You can go into the gyroscope and edit it as you need. And in this case, the row is correct because the gyroscope is positioned correctly and you can edit this into like whatever RPMs you want. So once I turn this on and I have that on my two bar, once I turn it on, it should kind of flip on its own as you see here. All right. So the gyroscope will flip, help and flip your ship and roll it around to its correct side. But you got to remember to turn it on and off. All right, key thing to remember though, when you're on the gyroscope, the power does matter. So if your power is set at like 25% and you want to roll the ship again, it might not have the power to do so. As you see, it's, it's not doing too much. So you may need to play around with the power sometimes, and then you may need to play with your RPM settings too. That way you get a decent, like slight sensitive adjustment of how you want to roll your ship or rover because you don't want to roll it too fast. If I did this and left it on, it'll just keep rolling really quickly and destroy big parts of your rover or your ship, which is something you don't want to do. However, if you want to do it in a more safer way and not with a gyroscope, maybe you don't have the materials for to make a gyroscope, you can flip your ship using blocks. So you can use things like the light armor blocks with an additional item that you know for sure is heavy but you don't have to weld it up. So if I wanted to flip this over without my gyroscope, what I would normally do is add blocks all around the side here and maybe make it as high as I can, but not too high. And you're only spending one steel block doing this, which is great. Well, one steel block per block. So the heavy item for us and for a small grid, you probably want to grab a battery. So you can grab the battery and start placing them towards the side you want it to flip back over. So eventually, the more you put here, it's going to start flipping over to one side as you see there. Right. So now we're sideways and nothing broke on the ship and not spending much materials at all. 
and generally we will just slowly get rid of some more batteries as we go and it will continue to come down some more down some more and then eventually it's gonna be on, on its wheel side up as you see here so that is another way of really get rolling your rover back to its um, wheels or positioning it in the right way and I think that's the more safer route than to play around with the gyroscope as that's uh, a much more beginner friendly tip than messing around with the gyroscope to be honest so with the large rover same thing you can do the same exact thing whether with using batteries or something even heavier and for an example we'll flip the ship over all right so we have a large grid ship that is completely fl flipped over to its side and if it's upside down it just takes a little bit more time to work with it so large grid i would generally use a more heavier item than a battery <laughs> and that can be anything along the lines of a refinery uh jump drive or even batteries too so we can use a refinery and you probably want to place it in a very strategic way so i'm going to put it on its side that way and pretty much bring it over to the right side or whatever side is flipped over as much as possible until it starts to flip onto its side and you don't have to do it perfectly i just pl pl place them everywhere to be honest and you can just place as much as you can until it starts to really move so right now as you see there it is now falling down and it just easily flips the ship it's gonna create holes in your terrain but i mean that's better than creating or damaging your own ship instead so same technique take down the refineries or whatever item it is slowly and you'll slowly just consistently drop the, sh the rover or ship that's flipped over and of course you don't want to do this too fast because then it might cause some damage uh, to the ship or rover and now we have a perfectly flipped over large grid rover so that's a cool little tip for you guys um, they can easily use instead of going crazy with the gyroscopes all right ever had an issue putting on the wheels because your rover was touching the floor <laughs> so basically what you normally would do is go to control panel go to your suspensions or your wheel suspensions and add a wheel but because there's not enough space between the rover and the floor it's not going to allow you to make that wheel so one of the easiest tricks that i've learned to do or continue to use as you may have seen in my space series is to actually add a piston or two so for an example i'm going to add a few pistons along the sides of this rover the yeah this rover and i'll be able to lift it from there so what i would normally do is potentially add some blocks if i need to so here's one point that's another point and another point where i'm going to add pistons so i'm going to put three pistons basically the one here one here not here <laughs> and one here and what you can also do in extension to that is to add um, small blocks here to give it more height and to give it more stability like that so i'm gonna leave the back alone that's perfectly fine this one i'm gonna edit just a little bit because i'm not gonna add one to the front so we just extend it out a little bit probably not too much because of the wheels uh yeah didn't even think about that <laughs> right so you can add it for a little bit of stability and what you want to do is weld up these pistons all right all pistons are done so with the three pistons all done we can either hop in or just hit the control panels or get into the control panel turn on the pistons and you can change the velocity if you want i normally don't bother too much with it so I just hit reverse and it'll bring down the pistons and lift up your ship 
So now, well, I should probably put some support in the back. So now you can easily add your wheels. So if we went to the wheels again this time, hit add wheels, all of them can be produced because it has the height to do so. So that's a bit of a pretty cool tip or trick that I've learned on my way um, in my space engineer's career. And that way you can add your wheels or potentially fix your wheels if you were to accidentally lose one wheel. So if, let's just say you lost one wheel, but these wheels were perfectly intact. But since, you know, this is still on the floor. So for example, your wheels touching the floor, that you're not, definitely not going to be able to add a wheel to it. So if I were to go into the menu, add the wheel, and it's going to show you this one here, add wheel, it's not going to add. It can't because it's on the floor. So best way is to add those pistons and you technically, if this happens, you technically don't even need to have this piston here. Right? So if you want to just fix one wheel, you, you can just put one piston on the side and then raise up the pistons from here. The back one's going to turn on too, but that's fine. Um, yeah, you bring it up from the side. Hopefully you don't flip it so you can control the pistons a little bit, but usually it won't flip with the small pistons here and then you can finally add your wheel done so that's a really fun and easy tip to add your wheels or hey if you need to make anything underneath um, your ship or rovers and things like that you can do that too all right so i hope you guys enjoy some of those beginner friendly tips it actually did take me a while to figure some of these stuff out previously even though i've been playing space engineers for quite some time but Hey, whatever I learned, I want to share it with you guys too. Of course, if you enjoy this type of video, please leave a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe, and I'll potentially do more beginner guides or beginner friendly guides next time. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.